Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. Now, whenever I talk about the future of legacy autos and the fact there's a good chance that their ICE business could all go bankrupt, well, I'm always left with multiple comments about how they'll just get bailed out. And all right, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you, but I don't think it would be a similar bailout as last time. In fact, I actually think that legacy autos are already pre-planning their bailout. You see, these legacy companies, they don't really care about moral hazard. They will just run hot and redline the company to get the most profits without worrying about tomorrow. Why? Because tomorrow, the government's got their back. This was what confused investors before the GFC. The banks had all these toxic assets, but didn't care because they knew the government had to bail them out. And this is part of the cronyism side of government. An average senator spends 30 hours a week fundraising because there's a 98% correlation between having a bigger campaign budget and winning. Well, these donors aren't donating to charity. They want something in return. And we witnessed this last year with the UAW. The UAW is a large supporter of Biden's campaign. And as a result, Biden tried to return the favor by hooking them up a sweet EV rebate just because they have unionized labor. I think it was Franklin D. Roosevelt who actually made contributions from unions illegal as it was so corrupt. And I believe the unions circumvented that law by having individual union members donating personally instead. I'm not necessarily 100% against unions. There are argued benefits. It's the corruption that unions create that's the problem. And it worked. GM got their bailout and Chrysler's been bankrupt in the past too. The question is this time, how can they be bailed out? Well, it's simple. The government lends them lots of money or buys into the company and provides capital to keep you going through the recession to come out the other side. And then the bridge loan is repaid. Except what's waiting for them on the other side? An ICE business still intact? What are the government even going to be bailing out here? I mean, sure, legacy will downsize during the recession due to plummeting sales, make layoffs, close facilities, but are still losing too much money. They'll need some assistance to help with the cash flow until they get back on their feet and the economy returns. But what happens when the economy returns and those ICE sales, well, they're all still falling. How are they gonna pay back their government bailout if no one wants to buy their products, even though consumers can afford them again? I mean, it's not hard to notice the emptier looking car dealerships these days. Something is up. Sure, component shortages with supply chain issues, but it's possibly also a deflection as to the real truth. No one wants smelly, old, noisy ICE cars anymore. They are antiquated. People come up to me often saying they're interested in an electric car. Now where I live is not quite the same as somewhere like California. Teslas are not quite everywhere yet. Also cars are generally more expensive as is gas. My point is as a society, they are not as educated about Teslas. Despite that, I see a definite conscious movement to people choosing electric as their next car, even if it is just a Nissan Leaf. And they feel it would be almost stupid to buy an ICE car next. Especially if you have 50 to $60,000 to spend, that's a lot of money to spend on something that will be quickly antiquated. Oh, so for Legacy, they're getting hit double hard in this recession. For starters, it's tough enough for them right now with Tesla eating their market share with a product they don't know how to compete with profitably. Then on top of that, the aggregate demand drops due to the recession. Well, perhaps they can fall back on their cash position and carry them through. Except that seems to be about negative $100 billion. Probably won't last long. Help, they call, but it's all good. Like I said, they've pre-planned this. Now you do realize there's a possibility that some of these legacy execs actually do have a brain and the task in front of them is just too difficult. But you see, we're all too naive. We're thinking, how will legacy be able to get out of this mess with the tools at hand? The tools being good business practices. Like I said, we've been naive. Legacy don't have to play in the rules-based society of business that we know. No, their planning wasn't about trying to get a more efficient powertrain. Their planning was working out the best way the government can carry them forward. So what did they do? They got the government and by extension the taxpayers, likely the majority of people I'm talking to now, well, they got you to pay for it. So they get some sort of bailout. But what good is it if no one wants to buy your products anymore? The government could have bailed out Blockbuster Video too, but then there'd be all these zombie video rental stores. I don't think the US government would want to support zombie corporations just making products for the sake of it and not even selling all of them to the consumer. Zombie corporations like are in Japan and a way of managing, for lack of a better word, their insane debt. Whilst Legacy's ice business is going down in flames, at the same time, they are very close to another industry that happens to be a whole lot more profitable, the EV industry. In fact, Legacy have already started planting their seeds for their EV businesses to flourish. They're going big. I mean, really big. Almost betting half of their company's market caps on growing out cell and battery factories with new EV plants. Some of them are borrowing as big as $50 billion to do this. That's a lot of money. I mean, seriously, it's enormous. 
how are they going to pay that much back? Especially if we go into a recession and they end up going bankrupt. How will a bailout fund that? Oh, wait. Oh, that's it, isn't it? That's the bailout. Legacy have taken the liberty of, perhaps you might call it, a pre-bailout for themselves. That's right. They decided to borrow the bailout money before they even received it. In fact, they're borrowing as much money right now as physically possible to expand their battery supply market share as much as possible and as soon as possible. And with the knowledge of knowing they don't have to pay it back if things go bad. So what's the worst that could happen? Either Legacy bet their entire company on EVs. If it doesn't work out, they go bankrupt. Or they don't invest in EVs and go bankrupt anyway. There's nothing to lose. And with the former investing in EVs, there is at least something that can be bailed out. A Legacy EV business. That's right. Your tax dollars will go to building up Legacy Auto's EV business to compete with the Tesla business you invested in as the future. And that's government and cronyism for you. And this ends up halting our innovation and standard of living. In fact, no auto companies were supposed to ever get this far. Tesla was quite naughty getting past all the other hurdles that already been set in place for so many auto companies to fail over the decades. Yet Tesla managed to escape, although only just at times, Tesla survived and made it and then flourished. It would seem Legacy can't do as much to hold back Tesla now and instead need to actually do some work for once and actually make a half decent electric car. And of course, with the government's help. And what about Tesla? Will they receive a bailout of some sort too? It has to be industry-wide. Well, perhaps the government may decide this bailout is just for autos with unions or ones that only make ice cars or something. Either way, Tesla likely doesn't want it. They don't need the government to succeed. I do think we are underestimating some of the tactics that legacy autos may have up their sleeves. For them right now, it's getting close to do or die moment with a bailout like this, then it may mean that Legacy survive around a little longer and even able to make it so far as to make a profitable EV. Of course, this will be short-lived until Legacy run into the next roadblock due to the fact they're companies that specialized in making engines, not software. Yup, their next roadblock is going to be FSD. Anyway, I think this is how the bailout will occur. It will be the government's rescuing all the EV sides of the business and trying to transition as many workers over and likely redesign some of their existing factories. Remember though, this doesn't suddenly mean Ford will be able to make more EVs. It just means they may last long enough to make EVs. But it's still going to take Ford or GM years until they are at a million a year run rate. And of course, producing non-profitable EVs until then. So this recession might finish off their ICE businesses, but there'll still be years of losses in their EV businesses. Perhaps the market will give the companies a higher PE ratio so they can float some more shares. Although that EV bubble has somewhat burst now, and without profits or a clear path to profitability, it might be hard. And the market has likely gotten wiser somewhat since Nikola, Lucid and Rivian. This bailout might cover their EV debts of 30 to $50 billion, but then Legacy are still stuck with an EV business likely losing billions a quarter, if Rivian's anything to go by. It will require serious ramping until it gets to profitability. There may be some profits coming from the spare parts side of Legacy business. Maybe even some car loan income too, but will it be enough? Even with a bailout, this looks like a tough job, but without one, it looks like sheer impossibility. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.